Welcome back everyone to another ESO build video. Today is going to be the update to the Easy Sork for the Dragonhold DLC. Now, damage did go down across the board in-game because basically we're out level in the content like hell. So we're, it's far too easy for people to complete stuff by just nuking the hell out of it. But it was a reasonable amount that it dropped by. It wasn't massive and it wasn't necessarily game-breaking. But some builds did get affected more than others. This one, in fact, is actually still doing just fine. A couple of alterations, sure, but it's doing really, really well. The main design for this is to be ease of use. It's supposed to give out a lot of AoE, a hell of a lot of AoE in fact, plus supplying off balance as well with much needed damage boost to your group. And of course, pumping out single target damage that is respectable enough to do all content, but not necessarily over the top. So good single target, massive AoE, easy to use and helps your group. Now, I am going to go over everything in detail, so if you've seen this before, you probably know where this is going, but if not, then don't worry, everything is going to be covered. Well, first of all, we're going to go into the stats, so just make sure our buffs and bonuses are showing. So, we are on 38.3k max magicka, 18k max health, and 10k max stamina, also followed by 904 mag recovery and 688 stam recovery. That will actually help us, um, especially blocks and dodge rolls and such. 63.4% crit chance with 3k spell damage, which will go up to just over 4 when we're buffed. 18k spell resistance and 16.2k physical resistance. Now we're using 64 points into Max Magicka because we've got more than enough health anyway. And of course we are using the Shadow Munder Stone alongside the flat bonus food, Max Health, Max Magicka, and a stage, we're a stage 4 vampire of course. Um, you can go lower if you want, but I'm really comfortable with stage 4. Now just to confirm what food we're using because it's not showing properly in the stats there. This will give you 5.3k max health and 4.9k max magicka. So it's really, really nice flat stuff. We don't need the recovery because it's all covered in our rotation. Now I'm going to go into the skills in detail. I'm going to explain every single one of them, where they come from, what the morphs are and how you apply them. If you are already familiar with this, you're welcome to skip. But of course, remember, if you do miss out any information, then ask those questions in the comment section below. They won't be answered because it's already been done. So the timestamps are at your own risk. But for those of you that want to know, First of all, do not judge me. We are using the Summon Twilight Tormentor. I don't usually use pets because they're really, really annoying except for the bear on the warden. But this one got buffed to hell and it's stupid not to use it. It's very, very strong. The Scamp was a lot, lot lower in overall damage output. And I hate the Scamp anyway because he's annoying. But this being slightly out of the way of combat because it does kind of hover around behind you. So it's not really always in your face. Plus the damage output was really, really nice. And this will do direct attacks at your target. Now, if you activate this, you get 15 seconds of a buff for that pet. So, while it's active, it will do normal damage. But while this buff is active itself, not just the pet alone, you will do an increased 53% more damage to enemies that have more than half health. So, I will get to this in the passives, but sorcerers generally, due to some changes in the previous updates, have more burst um, potential than other classes because they tend to do more damage the higher the health and this pet is designed to kind of enforce that bonus the more health the more it does the less health then it obviously stagnates and this buff doesn't do anything so what you need to do is make sure that this is active all the time until the target goes under 50 percent health then stop casting it and just let it do its passive damage it's very very strong indeed but i'm going to show you how to apply that inside the rotation later now, next up is Daedric Tomb. This is in a dark magic skill line. So, fifth ability unlocks. You are going to want a couple of these on your bar to start with just to level the skill line. Starts off as Daedric Mine and morph it to Daedric Tomb. Now, again, this is one of those abilities that isn't used that much except for on this particular build and maybe a couple others out there. Um, but it's very, very strong if you can sustain it and our rotation allows us to do so. What this does, starts off as Daedric Mines, by the way. Make sure you morph it to Daedric Tomb. Otherwise, it won't do this. It'll have a timer. And basically, you just fire it and it will hit a target depending on whether they're standing in this or not but you can actually land it on the target and it'll pop straight away but it can also hit one target with multiples depending on the size of them and depending on how you position it so you have to be really really careful with this we'll dump the pet for now because i was just going to keep hitting stuff but as you can see here it's not area of effect it will hit three separate targets now however if it's a fairly large target or even a small target and you can aim it correctly and have it kind of dead center you can make two go off at once on the same target it's very, very unlikely that you'll get three. In fact, I don't think three even works. But you can have between one and two firing at the same time. 
and they hit really, really hard. So you have to make sure that you get to grips with this as far as your planning is concerned. Some people like to have um, auto cast on, which makes it a little bit more difficult. Some people like to have non-auto cast on, which I like to do, so then you can position it a bit easier and make sure that two go off all the time. Now, one can crit, both can crit, or none can crit. It's random, obviously, based on your crit chance, but you can make two go off on the same target at once. This is really, really strong, but what you don't want to do is this. You don't want to light attack, spam, light attack, spam, light attack, spam. That will make you run out of resources really quick. You have to heavy attack between them, because otherwise you'll run out. It's very, very expensive, but it's very, very strong. You can preempt them, or you can use it as kind of your in-between spammable with your heavy attacks. Now, next up is Hardened Ward. This is in the Daedric Summoning skill line. Fourth ability you unlock starts off as Conjured Ward, morph it to Hardened Ward. This is very simple. It is a damage shield. And the more health you have, the higher the shield will be, because it is based off of 60% of your maximum health and no higher. So your max magic does increase the size of this shield up to as far as it can go, and then your health caps it there. So this could probably go higher based on our max magicka, but our health will cap it. So the higher your health, the more potential you can get out of your shield. Now, next up is Bound Aegis. This is also in our Daedric Summoning skill line. Fifth ability you unlock starts off as Bound Armor, morph it to Bound Aegis. This is really, really simple, but people misunderstand it. Now, while slotted, this will give you maximum magicka increase of 8%, and it will give you minor resolve, which will give you physical and spell resistance of 1, 3, 2, 0. It used to be called minor resolve and minor ward. Now it's just called minor resolve and you get both. Um, we got both before anyway, but they were two separate buffs. Now they're just one. Now, this also gives you a block mitigation bonus, but that is on a condition. So while it's on your bar, you have a resistance bonus and max magic. But if you activate it, you will get block mitigation bonus of 40% while blocking. So if you've got a big, big hit now coming in and you're blocking, and you've got enough magicka, activate this from under your block and you will take a lot, lot less damage. But if you don't activate it, you still get the passives. Lots of people think that you have to activate it to get your max magic. You do not. It stays with you anyway. That's only for blocking. Next up is, of course, Mage's Wrath. This is in Stormcaller. Fast ability to unlock. Starts off as Mage's Fury. Morph it to Mage's Wrath. This does lightning damage to the target. As you can see, it doesn't do that much damage because it is an execute. You do not want to use this ability unless the target is 20% or below. Now, if you activate it before 20% and it falls below 20% within the 4 seconds that it's active on the target, it will pop. If not, it won't. But if it's already under 20%, it will pop instantly and do extra damage plus splash damage as well. So, air of effect and single target at the same time. So, you only want to use this below 20%. So, what we've got here is our pet. You want to activate this while the target is above 50. This you want to be using all the time. And this you want to use when the target is below 20. So above 50, below 20, all the time unless you're executing. So this falls off when this comes in. But again, when we get to the rotation, that will make more sense. Ice Comet is on the bar just for passives. We're not going to go over these just yet. Passives are coming up after all the skills are explained. But you want this on your front bar just for passives. We don't actually use this actively unless the target is almost dead and we don't have enough um, ultimate to use our back bar ultimate. And this is in the Major Guild skill line, of course, you do need Major Guild 10 to unlock this. However, if you don't have that and you don't really want to invest time in Major's Guild level 10, you can, of course, go over to Dark Magic and you can unlock this ultimate here called Negate Magic, Morph it to Suppression Field. This is much, much cheaper um, than your main back ultimate, of course, just like Ice Comet is. It's not really used actively unless you are in trouble. So, your back bar ultimate, again, is what you should use all the time. But if you want to, you can have this on the bar instead of Ice Comet for a different passive, which I'll get to later. And this can actually be your kind of oh shit button. If I've got enough ultimate, I'll show you, which I don't. Yes, we do. Let's get out of combat and I'll throw it down. This is really, really good. Because what it will do is for 12 seconds, everyone caught inside of this, if they can be CC'd, as long as they're not a boss or anything, will actually be pinned to the ground. They will be uh, stunned inside that. And every single target in here, regardless of whether they can be stunned or not, will actually take damage every half a second. So the damage output in area of effect is actually pretty huge. But above all, this is a massive, oh my god, we're in trouble, shut everything down ability. So this is a very good choice if you don't have Meteor, or even if you choose not to, just in case you get in trouble. But for the most part, we use an Ice Comet on the front for passives. Now, back bar. Double bar the pet. Make sure the bar is covered with a pet on both sides because if not this happens we'll activate the pet and we'll take it off the back bar 
so we'll just put something else there. Rip. Pet dead. Activate. Swap it. Rip pet. Do not try and put it on one bar. You have to double bar it. It's not a necromancer pet that is fire and forget. You have to have it on both bars. Otherwise, when you swap it, it will disappear. So that one's that covered straight away. Next up is... Of course, Unstable Wall of Elements. This got altered again. Um, the timing is really, really nice on it now. 10 seconds is a great duration for this, but this is from the Destruction Staff skill line. Second ability to unlock. Starts off as Wall of Elements, more for two Unstable Wall of Elements. You can use Elemental Blockade instead if you prefer, because it's got a longer duration. It lasts 14 seconds instead of 10, but the damage output from this is actually much, much better. So this depends on what damage type of staff you're using. So Fire, Ice, or Lightning. We're actually using Lightning, but we'll get to that in the gear. So this will have a different effect. As you can see, the image here shows lightning. Now, this does shock damage every one second. If enemies are concussed while inside Wall of Elements, concussion is a status effect from lightning, by the way. It's a chance to proc it. They will obviously be hit with minor vulnerability, which will increase the damage that you and everybody else does to them by 8%. But at the same time, while they're concussed, if they're inside this wall, it will knock them off balance for seven seconds. Off balance will mean all heavy attacks done to the target will be increased by 70% and all resources gained from the heavy attack will be doubled. Now if it's a boss, then after 7 seconds it's a 15 second um, immunity stage. But if it's a normal trash enemy and it can be knocked down or stunned or CC'd, then of course once you've fully heavy attacked it will fall over, um, be stunned to the ground and the off balance will finish. But also there are bonuses in your champion points which can mean that your group can actually get a lot more damage out of this. So the lightning stuff is there on purpose to proc the off balance bonus. Now not only does it do damage and create off balance if you're lucky, but it also has an explosion at the end. So basically when it's running, as it finishes there's a pop. So if you keep looking you'll see it in just a moment. About now. There's the pop at the end. Now... If you reapply that, you can take the explosion straight away. And you can keep doing it. So you can actually use it as a bit of a spammable. Now, we don't necessarily use it for that. But just bear in mind, if you do overlap your mechanics and you do overlap your rotation and you feel like, oh, you're not sure if you've done your rotation right or not, I'll just start it again. You will not necessarily lose out because while this is active, you're running around, you're in trouble. Oh, you just want to put it down again and get started it will still get that explosion. So if it finishes, it'll blow up. If you reapply it, it'll blow up. Now, again, that is a very important skill. You must keep that down at all times. If you are doing a heavy attack or any damage, in fact, and that isn't down, you're doing it wrong. That needs to be down because it's very beneficial to our overall setup. Next up is Boundless Storms. This is in the Storm Calling skill line. Second ability to unlock. Starts off as Lightning Form. Morph it to Boundless Storms. Very simple. Activate this. You do damage to all targets in area of effect that are close to you. Every second. Even this many targets. No cap. So, keep that up at all times. While you keep that up, by the way, last 23 seconds, not only do you sh do shock damage and error of effect, but you also get major resolve. Again, it used to be called major resolve and major ward, giving you physical and spell, but now it's not. It's just called major resolve and gives you both. It did give us both, but the name has changed. So we have a massive resistance buff. We have a speed buff at the bottom there for four seconds once you activate it. And for the whole duration, it does shock damage close by. Keep this up. It's very, very powerful. 1k damage every one second doesn't look like much on paper. But once you get all your buffs and bonuses in, and consider that this is lightning damage, which can also stack with this for more lightning damage, for more concussion, for more off balance, it's very, very strong indeed. Next up is degeneration. Now, this can be swapped out for something else if you prefer, but we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, Mage's Guild, second ability to unlock, starts off as Entropy, morph it to Degeneration. Now this, in the previous sub, was Structured Entropy for the heal. The reason we've chosen this one is to keep up our Major Sorcery, so if you're not using Spell Pots, this will actually help out. But if you want the heal from the other morph, then you are more than welcome to do that. Just make sure that you've got your Sorcery covered via either a DK in your group or the Spell Pots themselves. But this will do damage over time for 12 seconds, and we want to keep this in our rotation the whole time. It was reduced somewhat as far as its overall damage output is concerned, but it's still very, very nice to use, and it's really cheap as well. Now, if you don't have that or your preference not to use it, you can, of course, go into Soul Magic, this ability you get at the beginning of the game starts off as Soul Trap, Morph it's a Soul Splitting Trap, and this will actually hit multiple targets at once. So the single target damage over time is actually less of this ability, but it does contribute to a lot of area of effect. So if we put this on, instead of hitting one target, this will hit all of them, as you can see. Stacked up with Boundless Storms, 
and Wall of Elements, we have a lot of area of effect. So that is also a choice. But if you are uncomfortable with that, there is one more, and this is a survival skill. And that is in our Storm Calling skill line. Now this here has changed quite dramatically. Because before, this particular skill starts off as uh, Surge, morph it to Crit Surge or Critical Surge. We used to use the magical version of this where it gave you Major Sorcery and used to heal you. That no longer happens. That's the Power Surge morph. Instead, that is now actually a heal. So this version used to just give us Major Brutality and give us the heal. So although we would benefit from the heals, we don't want Brutality, we want Sorcery. The basic skill of this now grants both major brutality and major sorcery so this version of the skill keeps our spell damage up and keeps our weapon damage up which we don't actually need and gives us heals just for doing critical damage so every single one second of damage that we do if we do a critical hit with any skill within that one second we will heal for 3.3k and that can crit to over 6k as well so this is your survival skill. If you preference this instead of a damage skill, it's really, really strong and it's very hard for you to die. Look at the side there where the green numbers are. We're looking for crits. 5.9, this isn't even fully buffed. 5.9 again, and all you have to do is you, you just do damage. Bound of Storms will do it. Even while you're resing someone and you're just ticking damage at something, you will heal every second. You're guaranteed to crit something. It's very, very, very nice indeed. So again, the choice is yours. You can have a survival skill, you can have a damage output and skill for single target, or you can go full AoE. Now finally, before the ultimate, Lightning Flood. This is actually a different morph to what we used to use in the past. This is the third ability down in the Storm Calling skill line. It starts off as Lightning Splash, morph it to Lightning Flood. We used to use Liquid Lightning, but this has now got a longer duration. It does more damage than Liquid Lightning, but it has a lesser duration than Liquid Lightning. But this used to be eight seconds, um, last update i think and now it's 10 whereas originally a very long time ago it used to be like six it's come up quite a way so this actually fits inside of our rotation really really nicely very simple put it on the ground everything in here takes more damage really nice every second alongside this alongside this and you can see here we've got lots and lots of light and damage ticking every single second our concussion status effect chance is going to be incredibly high which means we have a very very strong possibility to proc off balance for anything that is in wall of elements Increasing our heavy attack gain, our heavy attack increase to damage, and of course the group's overall damage output as well. And we don't have to put on any special sets to do this. Remember, by the way, lightning damage status effects, if they proc concussion, fire off minor vulnerability for free. Minor vulnerability is 8% increased damage for everyone on the target affected. So we'll put this on the targets here and see if we can get that to proc. There you go, almost instantly. See the two debuffs there? One of them is kind of a dude with a hammer in his shoulder getting wrecked. That is minor vulnerability. You can see it's still there. That's why it's off balance is firing. It's constantly going. That's your 8% increase to damage. No ether required. No uh, Nightblade teleport strike required. No Warden flies. No Necromancer totems. No uh, Noble's Conquest. There's no extra special stuff shown. There are other ways to get minor vulnerability, sure, but all you have to do is literally just keep your dots up, and that will happen. Now, the ultimate. Very important. The ultimate is Thunderous Rage. Starts off as... Where has it gone? Destruction stuff, ulti. Starts off as Elemental Storm, morph it to Elemental Rage, but it's called Thunderous Rage because we're using our Lightning stuff. If you use a Flame stuff, it'll be called something different, and the same for Ice as well. Every single version of this has its own unique effect. So, Fiery Rage has 15% uh, more damage. Icy Rage immobilizes for 3 seconds and Thunderous Rage increases the duration for 2 seconds. We want it for the duration because the damage output is fine anyway. It's another lightning ability that does damage in massive area of effect. And the longer it's up, the more concussion, the more off balance, you get the idea. And of course, there are bonuses to the Sorcerer for lightning damage, which we are coming up to in just a moment. But you must have level 50 in the Destruction Staff skill line in order to unlock this. Now we're going to go into passives. We are going to need some of these. This will reduce the health, magic, and stamina cost of all your abilities. Sustain, very nice, get it. When you hit an enemy with a direct applied dark magic ability, you heal for almost 2k. And this can happen once every 0.5 seconds and scales off of your maximum health. So the higher your health, the bigger this heal. And our health bonuses are quite high once we get all our buffs from trials and such. What direct dark magic ability do we have? This mine here will heal me. Now, look at the right-hand side of my character. You'll see a green number pop up. 
3.8k heal. Critting. Just for doing damage. So these mines not only do damage, not only CC, not only can hit two at once, or three at once if you've got multiple targets, but this also heals you as well. So very, very nice indeed. Make sure you keep that in your rotation, otherwise you won't get this heal. Uh, after blocking an attack, your next Magicka stamina um, abilities cost 15% less. So one or the other, whichever's next. When you block something, your next skill is cheaper. So that's when you really want to make use of this one because it's really expensive anyway. And finding the skill line, when you cast a Dark Magic ability, you grant your group a Minor Prophecy. That's a 6% increase to overall crit chance for spell crit. All you need to do is activate this once every 20 seconds. And of course we do because it's in our rotation all the time. So that is why our crit is higher when we are buffed up with this fired first. 63.4 instead of 57. We have a 6% increase across the board for everybody. So keep that up. You'll buff your group and you'll buff yourself. Daedric Summoning, of course. You restore 1452 Magicka when one of your Daedric Summoning pets is killed or unsummoned. That's not going to happen, but... If you're in PvP, perhaps, maybe that'll help you. The pets don't die inside dungeons and trials and all that good stuff. Uh, reduce the cost of your ultimate by 15%. Very, very helpful indeed. Make sure you get that. This will increase your health and stam recovery by 20% while you have a Daedric Summoning ability slotted. So, we have one here, we have one here, we have one on our back bar. As long as we're on either one of the two bars, you actually do have this. So, that's very, very helpful. Not only for your ability to block, but also dodge rolls, break freeze. If you've got a sprint anywhere, this will actually help. You want to keep your stam recovery up. Uh, increases your maximum health by 8% while you have a Daedric Summoning pet active. Now... I showed you earlier that we have 18k health. That's false. Technically, we have over 19. Because if we activate a pet and keep it running, which we will, we actually have 19.2. If we have Ebon, that will go over 20k. And if we have Minor Toughness, that will push us over 20k already. We don't have Ebon with us right now, but if we did, we'd be about 21, 22k health. In a trial situation, you have a lot of health, a lot of Magicka and Sustain, a lot of resistances. We're very, very good across the board. Now, this will increase our physical and shock damage. We do have a couple of magic damage abilities, but the rest is all shock. So that's really helpful. 5% across the board. This increases your damage done against enemies by 1% for every 10% health they have. Remember I said this uh, budgie here does more damage if the target is above 50% health? Well, that's why this is done that way. It's enforcing the kind of identity of the Sork, if you want, in terms of their application to damage. Their boost is when the target has the most health. So some classes are built for execute. So the lower their health, the more they do, which we do have an execute, but that's not what we're built for. We're built to push the target down from maximum and lower faster so that those execute classes can come in and finish them off. So to make that actually work out, the pet does benefit from that, and we, across the board, actually have higher damage the higher the health is. So at 100%, we have a 10% increase. 90%, we have a 9% increase. 80%, we have 8 and lower and lower and lower, all the way down to 10%, where we have a 1% damage bonus. So across the board, we are always going to be up by a minimum of 1%, but we can go up to 10% uh, depending on how high it is. So your job, as this particular class, is to do as much damage at top end as you possibly can to help everybody else finish it off. This actually increases your weapon and spell damage for each sorcerer ability slotted. As you can see, we've got a 10% bonus here. That is because our entire front bar is sorcerer skills. Sork skill, sork skill, sork skill, going and going and going. We can see one, two, three, four, five. That's a 10% bonus. However, if you choose not to use Ice Comet and you want your oh shit button on the bar, you can use Suppression Field. Now we'll have a 12% uh, spell damage bonus across the bar all sorcerer abilities on the back bar one two and three so we've got three abilities on the back bar that will give us a six percent on the back but again your ultimate choice is yours you can actually use greater storm astronaut if you prefer um but i tend to not use it because on single target fights it was quite nice but the um death royalty did actually outperform overall plus it's really really nice in massive uh fights where you do have a boss and lots of ads contributing to the fight as well again a choice Destruction Staff, you want every single one of these. This will increase your Shock Staff's potential a stupid amount. Because if you heavy attack, it will splash um, nearby targets. So, this is a heavy attack, very simply put. Nice, does nice damage. But, if you've got multiple targets, 
they all get hit. Depending on the damage output of this hit. So whatever you hit the main target for, you will hit the surrounding targets for equivalent of that amount. Based off of 100% of its damage. So, the more targets around your heavy attack target, the better. Because your AoE potential is huge. That's going to make a lot more sense again when we get to the sets. Because I'm going to show you how high that can really go. Um, your destruction staff abilities ignore 10% of enemies' spell resistance. So your light attacks, your heavy attacks, your destro skills, anything that is coming from that staff that isn't a class skill or anything else will actually be um, going through their resistances. This will increase your chance to actually apply status effects from burning, chilled, or concussion. So if you do ice damage, it's chilled. If you do fire damage, it's burning. And if you do lightning damage, it's concussion. Remember, this is a 100% chance on top of the base chance it doesn't mean guaranteed but it's very very high so the more lightning we do the more concussion we get the more minor vulnerability we get the more off balance we'll get um this is very very important equipment lightning stuff increases your damage done with area of effect abilities by eight percent so this here this here this here your death royalty and your splash damage from your heavy attacks are all area of effect so this buffs all of them. So that is why we have a lightning staff on the front bar. Not only for the splash damage from the heavy, which is very important to the build, but also because it will actually do lots and lots of extra area of effect damage from your area of effect skills. When you kill an enemy with a destruction staff skill, whether it be a light, heavy, or a skill itself, you will gain back 3.6k magicka. So in big, big pulls when you're killing loads and loads of stuff at once, and you will be, um, sometimes you might want to just finish off your heavy attack to kill it rather than fire off executes because you can actually get resources back. Not just from the heavy itself, but from the kill. We are using five pieces of light armor, so you want to make sure you get every single one of these passives. This will um, reduce effectiveness of snares while you're running around. You get snared, you don't actually get slowed down quite so much based on each piece worn. And reduces the cost of sprint as well because as magic or DPS, you generally don't have that much stamina. So this will bring the cost down a bit so you don't have to keep stopping so much. Uh, this will increase your mag recovery and reduction to cost for magicka based skills. This will increase your spell resistance for each piece worn. This will increase your spell crit rating by 10%. It says 2191. I know it's confusing, but that's 10% if you have five pieces or more. And this will increase your spell penetration by 4884 if you have five pieces or more as well. You must have five pieces of light on, otherwise those two will not apply. We're using one piece of medium. So you don't really need dexterity. You don't really need the um, improved sneak bonus, although you can do in some content, especially if you're trying to steal stuff or if you're in um, March of Sacrifices for ha perhaps for one of the bosses. This will actually help you though. Increases your stam recovery and reduction to stam abilities. We're not using one, but if you choose to put a beast trap, of course, that will help. But the stam recovery is really nice for um, CC situations where you have to dodge roll, break free or block. And the movement speed increase is helpful as well as a dodge roll reduction. So it's only for one piece bonus, but it does actually help. So you really want, above all, you want to make sure you get Wind Walker and Athletics. So you've got that tiny, tiny increase to recovery or reduction to cost so you can survive a bit more. If you don't have them, you may struggle occasionally with dodge rolls if you're really low resources at the time. Heavy armor, you want these first three, but not the rest of them because these are for five pieces, but you want these definitely. This will increase your physical and spell resistance for the one piece worn. This will increase your health recovery, which is not that important, but you will get 108 mag and stand back for taking damage once every four seconds for the one piece worn. And you will get a 2% health bonus. Our health is actually quite high from mag DPS, so this is really, really helpful. Uh, we are a stage four vampire, of course. You can go with any stage you want, but I would highly recommend at least three because that will give you access to this, which you need stage two for, increasing your mag and stam recovery by 10%, and three because you will have this, which will reduce the damage you take by up to 33% under 50% health. So the lower you go, the less damage you take. You actually get really, really tanky at low health, which is less risk on your part and your group. Now, Fighters Guild, you don't necessarily need anything apart from this one passive you will need. This will generate 9 ultimate whenever you kill an undead Daedra or werewolf. And believe me, you are going to get a lot of kills with this because your area of effect damage is broken. This is very helpful. You can use your ultimate more often. Mage's Guild, of course, you do want some of these if you're using the Mage's Guild skills. And this will give you um, a very helpful bonus here, which increases your Magicka 
and mag recovery by 2%. So your maximum amount by 2% and your recovery for each ability slotted. Now we do have one on the front bar. Um, it's the only one we're using. This will give you a 2% increase. Um, and that's why that is there. But if you prefer the spell damage instead, which is also very beneficial, like I said, you can of course use suppression field um, in place of it. But also on the back bar, we do have a major skill skill as well. So on the front, we have 2% increase to max magicka. And on the back, we have a 2% as well. Now that does also stack with this 8% bonus here. So they are quite handy. But the choice is yours. If you do use that on the front, you will want this passive. And if you do use Entropy, you will also want this. If not, don't worry about it. You can dump it. Undaunted is very important. You're going to want this, first of all. Any synergy you take will give you back 4% of everything. So make sure you take them. Don't listen to tanks screaming about the spears being just for them. They're clearly not. Otherwise, people wouldn't do dummy tests with a spear that they can pick up every 20 seconds. Every single synergy is beneficial, whether it gives you a heal, damage shield, or damage output. Make sure you take them. You'll get stuff back. And if people need spears or bubbles, they can just ask for them. There's no harm in someone casting a second one. This will actually help increase all of your resources. Because for each type of armor worn, heavy, light, and medium, you will get 2% across the board for health, magic, and stamina. So, we've got one heavy, one medium, and five light. We're wearing three different types. We are, of course, a high elf. I know people keep complaining at the beginning of the videos. And when I say people, I mean like one person per video. Uh, saying, where's the race? Just in case it's confusing, this is the passive section. This is a passive. We are a high elf. Enjoy. <laughs> now, when you activate a class ability, you restore 640 magicka or stamina, whichever is the lowest. Our stamina is the lowest. So for activating an ability, we'll hold block so our stamina doesn't recover. There's our class ability. We'll do a shield. We get stamina back. That happens once every six seconds. It doesn't sound like it's a lot, but it's actually really, really helpful. And while you are channeling an ability, you actually take less damage. But we've got no channeled ability, so that's not important. But you do want the stand back. Increases your max magic by 2k and increases your spell damage by 258. You can pick any race you like. Just bear in mind what passives you are losing or what you're replacing them with and adapt to those. So some have less spell damage, some have less max magicka, some have higher crit chance or crit damage rather. Um, there's lots of different options out there for you to choose from, but the choice is yours. However, flat damage output wise, this actually did outperform most, but depends on what you're looking for maybe you're too squishy and you want some bigger heels maybe you want some more resists maybe you just want to use something because you like the race it's entirely up to you it won't break the build when people say will it work no it's going to blow your game up of course it will work it will just be slightly different finally most important passive medicinal use max out your alchemy as quick as you possibly can get this passive and then dump all the rest of your points you don't need to actually make potions actively on this particular character if you don't want to but you will want this all potions you use, whether they're crafted or not, will be 30% longer. Spell pots and tripods generally last 36 seconds or so. With this passive, they last 47, and your cooldown is 45. Keep potions running all the time for the recovery bonus you get from them. If you just use a potion when you're very, very low, you're going to run out of resources way too quickly. And it's going to be a really hard time getting those resources back. Always keep them running. Now we're going to go into the gear. How many people are scared? Some of you have seen the effects already, so you already know that you're not in trouble because we are still using the Undaunted Infiltrator set. Now, this comes from Arx Carinium. You can get it on normal. Kill everything, loot everything, loot all the chests, kill the bosses, look for secret stuff. Make sure you pick up everything you see. This weapon itself, my first ever one, came from the first trash pack in the dungeon. You can get them from anywhere in there. It doesn't matter what difficulty either. But you want it on precise, you want the staff, and you want the jewelry. Because this technically is a medium set. However, because of trait changing, we can alter this so we no longer have robust on the jewelry. And this can effectively act like a light armor set. So two bloodthirsty on the jewelry with one infused and spell damage on all three of them. And you want the staff on the front bar. The staff on the front bar only. Because if this carries over onto the back bar and you reapply it again, you don't... You don't get anything extra from it. Now, to make sense of that, this has a max magic bonus twice, a weapon crit bonus, which is useless. Hopefully they update that at some point. And then when you use a magic ability, you will actually increase your light and heavy attacks for 10 seconds. So look at my arms. Now they're glowing. Now the reason you don't want this on both bars, watch what happens. It's still with me. You don't need it on both bars. Activate it on the front, swap it to the back. Now, when you're on the back bar, you don't benefit from the five-piece bonus uh, from this here. You actually lose them both, but you don't. 
because you still have this active effect, it doesn't matter that this is now grayed out on the back. And the weapon crit bonus, which sucks for us, that's grayed out on the back and we're not even using it anyway. So swapping bars is no loss to us whatsoever. The only thing you must do is use one magic ability every 10 seconds on that bar. And our rotation will cover that 100% of the time. Now, next up is, of course, the Maelstrom Lightning Staff. If you do not have this, do not worry. You can use Willpower for the time being. It did get a bit of a buff as well, so it's very, very strong and will give you extra bonus damage on the back bar in lieu of this. But if you do have it, you want to infuse with a Shock Glyph on it. Now, what this does is your light and heavy attacks deal additional damage to enemies inside your Wall of Elements. So, this will increase your light and heavy attacks flat out. This will increase your light and heavy attacks for being in your Wall of Elements. This. And they stack. Now, if we're talking crits, we'll go a bit buffed here. Without anything running, 10k. Wall of Elements, and this on, 23k. You can see how that just drastically escalated all of a sudden. That's because this buff is on, and because our Wall of Elements is down. The enemy must be in here, your arms must be glowing orange, and then you'll get massive, massive damage out of it. And it works, of course, when you swap bars too. Because the Maelstrom weapon buff is applied to the skill. So even if you swap bars, as long as the skill is active, it's still going to work. Now, this also gets boosted some more. Because it's light and heavy attacks. We're using Infallible Aoife. Stay with me. This has been explained multiple times before and only idiots get it wrong. This has a spell damage bonus. And it's two spell crit bonuses. And so across the board there, we've got nice crit chance. We've got nice flat damage. And finally, on the fifth piece. Not only is it spell crit on the fifth piece, but it also increases your heavy attack damage by 903. Now, on paper, that looks rubbish. But you just saw the escalating effects from 774 to a light attack and 1,161 to a heavy. This one increases your light and heavies by 1341. This increases your heavy by 903. They all look like small bonuses. But if you do a fully charged heavy attack with these three bonuses combined, it is huge. So what we're going to do here is we're going to hit this guy with a heavy. We'll make sure his off balance is gone first because I want to demonstrate that as well. We will take off this actually and put it on another bonus. So that will do for now. So we won't put on the fifth piece bonus. We'll do a normal heavy attack. So we're talking 7.8 there. Now we will activate our Undaunted Infiltrator. Let's make sure off balance is gone. Because we want to demonstrate that after. That's 12k if you crit it. Then we'll do Wall of Elements with Undaunted. That turns into 18k. Then we'll put this back on again. So we've got 18k heavy attack so far. This is before execute or blood first or anything like that kicks in. Come on. Now this time we'll make sure of course it's off balance is gone. As it should be. Wait for that to run out. Two, one, zero. So wall down, that one. 22k. You can see it's going higher. So that's with, und with Undaunted, Maelstrom, and Aoife. Because the heavy attacks have gone up. Now let's do it with an off-balance heavy attack. So everything is now in place. 32k. 32k heavies from combining all those abilities together. For your heavy attack bonuses and at execute that can go even higher because you've got blood Firsty giving you an increased 10 percent for each jewelry piece that we've got which will give us a 20 percent bonus over top they stack and they're supposed to not only that when you do this big heavy attack at the end it will pop and you see that number up the top there that direct damage one that is quite low unless you have all your buffs running if you do have all your buffs running and everything is smooth you've got this on you've got your wall of elements down all the rest of it that will actually pop a lot, lot stronger. And what you're looking for in your combat metrics is something called Shock Pulse. Now, for most lightning heavy attacks, you'll probably get anywhere between sort of 10 to 15, maybe even 20k on a crit. With this setup, because of the ether bonus at the end, 
that will actually top out to somewhere between 39 and 50k depending on the buffs you have at the time and that's not including with major vulnerability either that big pop at the end can hit as hard as a flame staff heavy attack and all the time our ticks from this are doing loads and loads and loads of damage not to mention of course remember it's splash damage so all of them are being hit it's done on purpose this is here for that bonus and yes many people are aware that if you do a full heavy attack you will grant the target minor vulnerability which gives everyone eight percent increased damage to that target that is not why we're using a set that is the free bonus we're getting from it just because we can the rest of the time we have so much lightning damage from this 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 our death royalty and our pet as well that we're basically going to have major minor vulnerability up all the time anyway so even if we weren't using that set we'd still get it so someone doesn't need to bring it the build is designed to supply that passively but we'll take the extra bonus just in case there's some downtime now let's get rid of the budgie just in case it starts hitting the dummy because it does not want to stop attacking. Now, to go over the monster set, however, we are, of course, using Zahn for single target fights. For single target, Zahn is really, really nice. It's got a spell crit bonus and it does damage every one second for five seconds and it gets stronger and stronger by 50% per tick. But it does have a big cooldown. It's got an 18 second cooldown overall. So as soon as it starts, the cooldown is applied so there's a 13 second gap between the 5 second up, 13 down, then can reapply. But not only does it fire from light attacks, but it also fires from heavies as well. Now, that's chance. So every one that you hit will have a chance to do it. But your heavy attack ticks also count. Per tick will actually contribute towards it. And there's the flames. As long as you don't go out of range, that will do a stupid amount of damage. There are other options though. And one of the main options, in which I would recommend in fact for most of you, is actually Grofdar. Grofdar is much, much easier to acquire. It has a max magic bonus to start with. And then it also applies a circle of fire around you that does damage over time. And this counts also as area of effect. And this is much, much easier to proc. Instead of lights and heavies and just a chance and a big cooldown, has five seconds up, five seconds down. So all you have to do is just hit stuff, basically. And this will happen. There you go. There's the circle and it hits everything. More area of effect, more damage contributed towards your uh, lightning staff passives. Again, that's your choice. So you can use Grofdar or Zahn. They're very, very close single target, especially if proc is, chance is not on your side because Grofdar tends to be very, very consistent, whereas Zahn is sometimes a little bit annoying. Sometimes it fires, sometimes it doesn't. But overall, single target Zahn, everything else Grofdar, but it's your choice. So just to recap, Precise with an increased weapon and spell damage, Infused with Shock, Divines on everything, Aether and Undaunted, Undaunted Infiltrator with Zahn or Grofdar. You can choose other stuff. However, you can use Turex Pact if you don't have anything from Trials or anything like that. Because Aether, of course, is from a trial, but you can go on normal. It's very easy to acquire that way, especially if you join pickups or even host your own. Um, but Turex Pact is a good choice for crafted. Or you can use the New Moon as well, which is also very, very nice. But make sure that you take all of your penetration bonuses out of your champion points because you will overcap like hell. This is very, very strong, in fact, in place of Aether. But just bear in mind, because you don't have that 903 heavy attack bonus, your actual heavy attacks and your splash damage will go down. But you'll have some nice damage bonuses which will contribute towards your skills. So you don't quite break even, but it's not far off. So that's your choice if you have a crafted set to uh, try and figure out what you should or shouldn't use. Now, I'm going to go into the champion points. So, first of all, Red Tree. 72 points into Ironclad to give us a 23% reduction to all direct damage. 64 and 64 here for everything else. Just flat damage reduction towards all physical and all magic types. And 51 points into here to give us a 19% damage reduction to damage over time. So these are all quite handy. You can move them around depending on the content if you need to. But for most stuff, this is absolutely fine. 19 points into Quick Recovery to increase our healing received from any heals that we do or other people do. 44 into Warlord to reduce the cost of Break Free. 75 into tenacity to increase the amount that we get back from our heavies don't forget of course our heavy attacks don't only do 70 percent more damage but they also give us double resources back if the target is off balance and 75 into arcanus to give us more mag recovery which is really really handy of course passively 72 into tumbling to give us a reduction to dodge roll cost we will be doing that quite a bit and we've got four points left they can't really go anywhere so we'll just put them in the shadow ward to give us a slight block cost reduction that's not quite two percent so we'll only get the one for that but it's better than nothing 
and of course the treasure hunter passive which will actually give us a bonus to loot so if we are looting chests we will get either more stuff or higher quality stuff so that's really really handy um this is pretty much very similar to before actually but 61 points into elfborn 9 into Spell Erosion and 64 into Elemental Expert. So flat damage bonuses, reach and pen caps, and if you've got all buffs and bonuses applied, of course, and hitting 100% crit damage if we have Minor Force, which our build does not. But you can apply it if you have your own Beast Trap, or you can get it from somebody else in the form of Twilight or Guard, if one of your tanks is feeling generous. 50 points into Staff Expert to increase our lights and heavies by 26%. And 11 in Master at Arms to increase our direct damage. That does count for our bird, our mines, and our light attacks. 75 points into Thermoturge to increase all of our damage over time. We are doing a lot of damage over time. Wall of Elements, uh, Liquid Lightning or Lightning Flood, in fact, is the one we're using now. Our Destro Ulti or our um, Storm Atro, if you choose to use that, or Negate Bubble then obviously our boundless storms we've got a lot of damage over time not to mention our heavy attack itself is tick damage it's damage over time this also opens up the exploiter passive which means while enemies are off balance you will do 10 percent more damage to them and that stacks with the 70 percent increase you do to your heavy attacks as well so i'm going to run over the rotation this is very very simple if you want to use the previous one you're more than welcome to but this has changed slightly for the better, and hopefully it's not too much to get used to. So, you want to make sure that your hands are glowing. So you need to use a magic ability before you start. Nine times out of ten, I tend to use a shield because you're protected on the way in, but you don't have to. You can just activate your pet. And this needs to be buffed because it does more damage the higher the target's health is. So make sure your budgie is active. Then, of course, you want to get your buffs on. So make sure that your Boundless Storms is running. So you've got resistances. You've got protection, you've got your budgie active, your arms are glowing, your light attacks are going to be stronger. So keep your buffs up. Now when you start the fight, what you want to do is you want to start with Liquid Flood, Light Attack, Degeneration, or Entropy, whichever one you've got on, or Soul Trap. Light Attack again, Wall of Elements, Swap Bar. Elemental Blockade or Unstable Elements, by the way, I'm going to use, I'm going to say Wall of Elements because it's the base version of it. So, Lightning, Light Attack, Degeneration, Light Attack, Wall Swap. So while everything's running, what you want to do is you want to do Liquid Flood, Light Attack, Degeneration or Soul Trap, whichever you've got on, then Light Attack again, and then Unstable Wall of Elements and Swap Bars. You're now back on the front again. You will Light Attack, Mines, Heavy Attack, Mines, Heavy Attack, Activate the Budgie again, and Swap Bars. So we need a dummy over here so we can mess with it. We'll take you. This is what it should look like with your buffs already on. So make sure everything's active. So, lightning, light attack, degeneration, light attack, wall, swap bars. Light attack, mines, heavy, mines, heavy, activate budgie, swap bars. Lightning, light degeneration, light wall, swap, light mines, heavy, mines, heavy budgie swap bars that's it that's all you need to do but once the target goes down to 50 percent, that's where you change it when the target is below 50 percent, you don't activate this anymore because it no longer gets the bonus so instead of budgie bar swap do an extra mines and bar swap that's it you just replace the budgie skill with an extra mines and that'll keep your damage up at low health then when it gets to 20 percent health Drop your mines all together and replace it with Major's Wrath. Now, while you're on the back bar, of course, you do want to make sure your buff stays up. So you are going to have to activate this once every second rotation. So if you can count this, Lightning, Light Degeneration, Light Wall Swap. Next time, Lightning, Light Degeneration, Light Rebuff Bounder Storms, Light Wall Swap. Whenever I say Light, I mean Light Attack. Next time, Lightning... Light Degeneration, Light Wall Swap. Next time, Liquid Lightning or Liquid Flood, Lightning Flood even, Light Degeneration, Light Buff, Swap Bars. So every single time, it's Lightning, Light Degeneration, Light Wall Swap. Next time, Lightning, Light Degeneration, Light Buff Up, Wall Swap. Does that make sense? I really hope so. <laughs> okay, now, when it's low health, keep it exactly the same. 
replace the budgie with a mine. When it's under 20, all mines go away and it's replaced with Major's Wrath. Now, when you do execute, it is up to you whether you light attack execute four times or heavy attack execute twice instead to keep your resources up and swap bars. Of course, the heavy attack execute will be less damage unless it's off balance, but it will keep you sustaining in the fight and you can keep all your dots and bonuses up. Now, I'm just going to show you a quick shot here. This is of a full dummy rotation on that dude over there. Remember, damage did go down for most. You do not want to see me do a 10 second rotation over and over and over for four minutes. That's quite boring. So here's a quick screenshot of showing what to expect if you have it set up as this and stick to that rotation on point. Note, this is without minor force. We don't have a beast trap. We don't have channel deceleration. We can't actually fit it without uh, diminishing some of our output from our passives or our skills. So if you do have Twilight in your group, make sure whoever's firing those synergies with that set on, you take them. So you have the increased crit damage. And of course, if your tank is feeling generous, perhaps you're the only easy sork in the group, they can give you guard, which means that you'll have minor force 100% of the time as well. That will, of course, make your damage go up. So instead of sitting there at about 70k, you can push her about 72, 73, sometimes up to 75. That's single target, by the way, not AoE. Your AoE is disgusting. So remember, this is designed for good single target with massive AoE, really good sustain and ease of use. It's not supposed to be a target dummy smasher. It's not meant to get 150k. It's just supposed to be enough to do what you can do at ease. It is absolutely fine for all content. And across the board over the last almost three years, I know of, and have done so much content with this build. People have completed all manner of things, including speed modes, hard modes, all that kind of stuff. It's absolutely fine and a big benefit to your group as well. So it's all about taste at the end of the day. If you like it, use it. If you don't, don't. So hopefully that helped. Hopefully it wasn't too boring. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of how to approach this particular build. Hopefully you now fully understand it. And hopefully you have a lot of fun with it. So first of all, thank you all very, very much for watching. I hugely appreciate your support. And if you are not subscribing, please do hit that button. It is free. Furthermore, if you want to help support outside of YouTube, there are some links in the info section for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, and of course the website, zonodegaming.com. Don't forget, of course, if you do hit that join button, not the subscribe one, the join button on YouTube, there is now a full five-tier membership program where there's actually perks within YouTube if you choose to do so. Again, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.